So we're going to go in three, two, one. Lions Lounge Lockdown, episode 23, Kevin O'Callaghan. Kev, thanks for your time, mate. Pleasure. Really looking forward to this one. So I've been trying to track you down for a while. And eventually, thanks mm. to I think your best mate, son Jordan, I've got my man. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Lots and lots to talk about. Came through the youth system at Millwall, 1977 yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was um, obviously doing the rounds, you know, as a young lad that everyone wanted to sign. Um, just something about Bob Pearson that got me and literally I was being offered money by quite a few clubs. I think he ended up signing for Millwall for Sheepskin Co. Um, <laughs> but no, I could see, like, I'd played, like, um, about a year before that. I could see they was putting really good team together with some good players and uh, I think we'd got in the final of the Floodlit Cup in them days which and we played the uh, you remember the uh, Crystal Palace team of the 80s Ilea, Gilbert and all that lot and we lost to them but only just so we knew we had a really good team for the next year you know and then obviously went on to win the FA Cup FA Youth Cup so yeah and it was great for me because to be fair I could have gone anywhere but I was ne wasn't going to getting a team as early as I did at Millwall. And uh, obviously I got the move to Ipswich two years later, you know? Yeah, it's a funny one because I say I was born in 80. So I remember right. my, early, my early memories of you is playing, obviously in, in the side that got promoted. When I've looked into it more in greater depth today, you was, you was something of a, of a, a young prodigy at football, really you know, highly rated youngster. Who did you come through the youth system with? And who was your manager? Other players around it as well? Yeah, so we had, um, first of all, we had, uh, um, the manager was a, an Argentinian called Oscar Ars. Have you heard of him? No, go on. Well, he was, um, yeah, he came through, he was brilliant. He was an Argentinian and um, I just loved him and he loved me. I, I think we went to, I was a schoolboy and we went to a French competition and uh, I remember saying to him, put me on and I'll score the winner and I did and Anyway, signed and I never went, went back to school. I, mean, I didn't even take any exams in the end. I just wanted to play football. Uh, yeah, then I come through with them um, like um, in my year it was like um, Paul Roberts, uh, Mehmet Dibble, uh, Glazier, the goalkeeper, loads of us, you know. Um, yeah. We had a lad called Tony Gow that should have been, a, could have been as good as anyone, but packed it in. Yeah, we had an amazing team, you know. So you had an Argentinian youth team manager at Millwall. Was his name Oscar Arsch? Yeah. His name was Oscar Arsch, yeah. And he was, um, he was fantastic. He was like something that we'd not seen before. Uh, and I absolutely loved him. And I'll never forget, we, we were... Uh, we all come in training one day and he'd done a runner. It was a bit weird. Uh, but I bumped into his son, which was that he'd left to go to... He was um, married to the, to the mother and he'd left... He just got up and left. I never see him from to that day onwards. But I spoke to him about him, and it was like amazing, yeah. And then uh, we had, uh, I think it was, was it David Payne? Right. He he was our manager, but you know, he would, uh, Oscar's the one that done all the all the all the work for us, and uh, yeah, it was brilliant. Yeah, so good. What was it like um, coming through the youth team at that point, being in and around the first team? Did you have to change uh, clean dressing rooms and clean boots? Was it was it all that? Yeah, yeah. I had to clean, um, we had to clean, I was, the, uh, we had to clean boots, do the kit and I, well, to be fair, I wasn't interested. I just wanted to play football, but we, we had, we had a good bunch of lads and we was always mucking around. My, my, um, player was, um, Barry Kitchener. Right. And he says to, well, I mean, he's, he's obviously passed away now, but he said I was the worst apprentice he ever had. <laughs> <laughs> But Barry was a great lad. Like he used to lend me his car, and uh, it was brilliant. I loved him. Um, really? Well, even well, when you was a youth team player, was this when you broke into the? Yeah, when I was a youth team player, I'd pass my test, but I hadn't had a car. I couldn't afford one at the time. Uh, oh, I was saving up for one. I can't remember now. But um, about what matches, he used to, like I used to say to him, lend your car, Barry, and lend lend his car. I'd put cut the hood in the in for him. But he's a great lad, yeah. But he said I was the worst apprentice. He said his boots were always dirty, his kit was crap, and. Uh, no, he said, but we just laugh about it, you know. So he, said he, was, he was the worst apprentice that he, that he ever had, and he, and he was still willing to lend you his car. So imagine what a good apprentice he's got. Yeah, no, he loved me, really, you know. But, um, uh, yeah, I just, I mean, we, I, I did. I, we, you know, we had to clean the toilets, do this and do that. But, 
well, yeah, we've done it. We just, we, most of the time we were, you know, mucking around, you know. I've had a look into um, your career at Mill. Well, first time round, 1978 to 1980, 23 mm. appearances, six goals. I and mean, then I was thinking, why so few appearances? You actually broke into the first team as a youth team player. Yeah, yeah. So I got in, I, it was strange because um, I had a few injuries. I had, I had this, a couple of injuries, but I was playing the year, the year that we won um, the FA Youth Cup, I broke into the team. And a couple of times, um, I remember I played for the first team the night before and then gone with the youth team to play. And like, I was a struggle because it was tough uh, playing for the first team and then going and playing the youth team. But um, yeah, no, I broke in and... Uh, uh, I don't know, within, I played just after we started the next season, I was in the team playing and then Ipswich came in for me. There was loads of rumours that, you know, there was loads of clubs in for me. Um, I remember coming home one day um, on a Sunday, I'd been out for a drink with my dad, I think, and uh, I come in, put the, I don't know if you remember, now, back in the day, it was a Sunday afternoon called, called the big match. Yeah, and yeah. that match of the the day it was called the big match it used to be on a Sunday afternoon and I, the first headline on it was uh, Kevin O'Callaghan Dave Mermit and Tony Kinsella uh, a million pound offers coming from Tampa Bay Rowdies which was Gordon Jago who was the, my first manager at Millwall or the first team manager at Millwall you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. I knew loads of clubs were in for me but you know I didn't really want to go to America um, and then yeah I, that, I think the club to be honest I think I remember something about the bank had um, said they weren't going to pay, pay the wages for the next month or something like that. And that's when Robson came in and obviously, uh, you know, I went to, went to um, Ipswich. Yeah. Do you remember your Millwall debut? It was quite a big game. I've looked it up. Yeah, Notts County. Oh, it was Notts County, was it? Oh, I've got that one wrong then. I thought, was, I thought, you, I thought you come off the bench against Cholton. Yes, I did. Sorry. Yeah, right. I thought you meant my fault. No, no, that's right. So when you came off the bench, I came off the bench. It was a muddy game at the at the uh, um, the valley, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it three three or something like that? Four two. It was three two up half time. Won the game four two. Something's never changed, mate. Beating Charlton. You know, it's strange. um, My ties to uh, the valley. I played. It was the first way to play for a Sunday team called Pop and the Boys, and we was like unbelievable team that's my first ever professional ground I played at we had some Sunday uh, final there I made my debut for Millwall there and I played my last ever professional game at the Valley as well for, oh, for, full for circle. Charlton Reserves yeah for Charlton Reserves yeah I was trying to get fit I just couldn't get fit it was a weird one because again when I was researching it you forget the old I remember the days of two substitutions but back then yeah. one substitution so Oh, yeah. you probably, you know, if it was modern day, five, six, seven subs, you'd have had a lot more chances of getting in even early than you did. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. That's why, I, I, I mean, I agree what they're doing now. I like, I like the idea of having five subs, you know, and, mm. and using five subs as well. Like seven subs and using five of them, you know. Yeah. But as you say, it would encourage teams to put kids in a lot more earlier. I mean, give them a, you know, a 10 minutes, 15 minutes there just to get them used to it. Yeah. Well, say so you started, you broke into the first team in, in what was a very difficult time for the club, for people, for the younger viewers watching. Now, this isn't the meal we know today. This is a team struggling in what would now be League One, crowds of 6,000, right. uh, three managers that season. Uh, Gordon Jay got to start with. He was sacked. Yes. Theo, Theo Foley, um, temporary charge. And then George Petchy comes in. What were they like yeah, for you, then, managers, all three of them? Yeah, they were good. I, I don't... Gordon Jay goes to when I was a schoolboy, so I didn't really have a lot to do with him. But, you know, he obviously went to sign me and whatever. Um, Theo was a great, you know, uh, really good coach. I can't remember Theo getting a job temporary, but obviously I was a lot to do with that. And then Jules came in here, and I liked Jules. Jules was okay, yeah. Mm. You know, so we finished, was... um, finished 16th that season. Really? Yeah, God. finished 16th. I was amazed looking back. I mean, look, I was before my time, but... I was amazed that he kept his job for nearly three years because, you know, in, in the second season, we was relegated under him. Really? And, yeah. What, from the, from, from uh, the old second division into the third, yeah? Yeah, from the, old, from, the old, um, from the old second division into the old third division, which would now be League Two, 1979-1980. Yes. 
Um, and we get ready to go into the bottom tier, which again, for you as a youngster, what was that like, mate, breaking in and being around it, but then you know, feeling the, the downs of, of relegation? <laughs> I don't think it really mattered when you're young like that. You just want to play yeah. for the first team. Where, wherever they're playing, it don't really matter to me. Um, I sort of, in the back of my mind, I knew I, I knew I wasn't going to be there that long, you know. Um, yeah, uh, true. Um, you know, there's rumours going everywhere. Every time you picked up the evening standard or whatever, I was going somewhere else. So, um, no, I just, you know, it was great. I loved it, you know. Um, plus, we had, like, when I, as I said to you, explained to you before, plus when it was breaking in, we were about to win the FA Youth Cup, which when we played, I mean, I don't know if you know the story, but we played Man City in the final and uh, I think the crowd was more than what the first team were getting. Oh, really? Where was the first? Yeah, I think there was about seven or 8,000 there. Where was that? At the day. Oh, was it, oh, was it, it was oh, two legs. Two legs, two legs then, yeah. Two sure. legs. We played them up there, I think we drew nil nil and we beat them about three or four nil at home. Oh, really? Something but they had a good team, you know, Tony Coat and Reed and a, a lot of other lads. Yeah, we've done well, yeah. Dave Mimic come through with you as well? Yeah, yeah, they, they played in that team and uh, who got into the first team would have been, I think Andy Dibble would have got a few games. Uh, obviously, Paul Roberts, uh, Dave Martin, Robinson. Yeah, they all played in the first team. So, you know, we, I think everyone more or less uh, made it out mm. of that team, you know. And then when you went into the first team, obviously, we've, we've, we've rushed on Barry Kitchener. We had the likes of Tony Tanner, Nicky Chatterton, uh, yeah. John Seisman, a few names I've written down. What were, they, what were them boys like to be around and play with? Yeah, they were good. They were good to us. You know, we always got on well with them. Um, I played with, uh, is it David Donaldson, the left back? Uh, yeah. Obviously, I played on the left wing. We had John Moore. And yeah, it was good. I mean, I only, but to be fair, that summer, when I more or less got in the first team, I probably haven't played it. That's the year I probably played back five, six games. I remember being out injured, and that's when I obviously went to Ipswich at the end of that. I hadn't, so I hadn't played that much, you know. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's unbelievable. The 1978 79 season said we was relegated into the bottom tier with along with Blackburn and Sheffield United. Um, yeah, I know. And then Petri keeps his job. Obviously, you've then gone from uh, occasionally used substitute and occasionally starting to. First team football straight in, score five goals in the first six games of the season. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I remember we played, um, we played Gillingham in, because um, you remember them, that, well, I think you still do now, you the League Cup comes early. We had them in a double header. I think I scored at home and away. I think I scored two headers, and I don't think I ever scored a header again for the rest of my career. Um, but yeah, so, you know, we was flying then. I think, I think, I don't know how we were doing in the league. I can't remember now, but... Um, yeah, they finished, we finished all mid-table. But as we say, you... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you was gone. You, you left the yeah, car. Yeah, I was gone. Yeah, yeah. You must have... Started so I remember... Point. So I hadn't... Um, so when I left to go to um, Ipswich, mm. I remember coming back and I think... Wasn't uh, George Brown manager that year? Did he That's come right. in there? That's right. So, so basically, Petchy's Petchy. That would have been his last year. George Graham comes in. You go to um, still only eighteen years old. You get sold to Ipswich to Sir Bobby Robson as manager for a quarter of a million pound. Which you know, again for the younger viewers, that would be that was a lot of money then. Yeah, that was a record for a teenager then. Mm. Uh, I think um, Ian Rush then broke it about four months later when he went for uh, to Liverpool for three hundred and thirty thousand. I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of money at the time, yeah. What was that like for you, going from George Petchy to Sir Bobby Robson? Completely different yeah. environment. Were Ipswich in the top division then? Yeah, yeah. But it was weird because, um, I mean, I, I, remember, I remember seeing bits of Ipswich on the telly, um, you know, match of the day and bits. I remember like them scoring unbelievable goals and thinking, Jesus, that's good. Uh, I went to Ipswich, not really knowing that, because they wasn't like... Um, household names in, because they were just about to take off. So I went there, up, I think it was the November or the December, something like that. And uh, they, I think they were near the bottom of the league and I was struggling. And from the day I went to the end of the season, they went unbeaten and they ended up runners up in the league. Jesus. Uh, and then the next year, obviously it took off where we should have won the, um, well, we should have won the FA Cup. We won the UEFA Cup. We should have won the league. And uh, what was the other one? And the League Cup, we got knocked out in the semi-final by, by so we had an unbelievable season, you know, and just mm. great, 
just like world class players, you know, um, Muren and Tyson and Butcher and Osman, George Burley, uh, Gatesy, Brazil, Mariner. It's just and Johnny Walk, obviously, who nowadays would be probably worth 200 million plus, I would have thought, was, you know, scoring 30 goals from midfield every season, I think, for about 10 years. Yeah, what was he like, Sir Bobby Robson? What was it like going up there, meeting him and like, deal done? You said there was other interest. Did he have to persuade you to join Ipswich? Uh, not, not really. You know, he's the, they've got more or less the first ones to come in. And I didn't, to be fair, when you're young like that, you don't really know. It wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't high profile at the time, you know. So yeah, true. it was only when I went there that it all, it all just went crazy, you know, for three years until we got the England job, or two and a half years. We just had like, I've just seen, I mean, I didn't play a lot. I mean, obviously I was a sub and come on, I probably played about 15 games a season, but obviously I come on a sub quite a bit because I think even in them days, it was still one sub. So he sort of used me as what they call now an impact player with plenty of pace. Um, but yeah, that, it was just like two and a half years of just like, I'm watching. My, my, like my, my away debut was at... Um, uh, I came on a sub at Everton away, we beat them 4-0. My home debut was Man United at home, we beat them 6-0. <laughs> so you can just imagine, like, it was just, I was just seeing things. It was just... Must have been like a know. whirlwind, mate, to go from apprentice at Millwall within two seasons, winning the UEFA Cup must have been unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and, and we should have won the league. I mean, we, we, got, we got knocked out in this... We, we got knocked out the... So that was the year that uh, the Man City, the famous Ricky Villa goal, you know, against Man City. Yeah, but we should have beat Man City. They, they scored in the last minute of extra time. Uh, we went back to Villa, because the semi-final was at Villa in them days. We went back to Villa the next, on the Tuesday, and we battered um, Villa 4-0. V Villa won the league, and that's the next year. They won the European Cup, you know? Yeah. So, but we should have won. We just didn't have the squad, you know. We probably had about 15 players, you know. Mm. And by the end of the season, it was all getting, when you get your suspensions and injuries, and we just didn't have the squad to keep it going, you know. Towards the last, I remember for two years, the last month, just, you know, was on our knees, really. Yeah. But no, it was brilliant. I mean, you know, I mean, just, it was mind-boggling. The, the, I mean, they, then they all obviously got in the England team and, then it all took off at Ipswich, you know? Yeah. Well, after Ipswich, again, looking at your career, it's amazing. Gone on to Portsmouth, and you've ended up getting them promoted into the top division as well with them. Yeah, that was that was weird, because I went to... Um, also, at, at the time, when I, when I signed for um, uh, Millwall as a kid, I don't know if you know this, but there was a scout as well that was... Te well, yeah, he was. I think he was teaching um, Bob Pearson, really. And his name was Derek Healy. Uh, and Derek Healy was um, like Bawley's number two down in Portsmouth. Mm -hmm. So that's how, when I got down to, to Portsmouth, I mean, like Vince Allaire was there, Billy Gilbert, you know, the old Crystal Palace players. Uh, we had an unbelievable team. I mean, uh, first season, we um, missed out on goal average. Second season, we missed out on a point. And then the third season, we got promotion. Um, so it was two and a half years of like we hardly lost the game, you know. Mm. So that was really good. And Alan Ball was manager, and he was brilliant, you know, with, with everyone. Um, but yeah, it was great. And then I, I'd got a bit of an injury towards the end of the season. I had this. Um, I'd always have. I always had stiff calves, and I always had my socks down. And uh, I started getting these pins and needles, and my feet were going numb. I mean, didn't know what it was for half time. Uh, second half, it, I was just gone. Uh, um, couldn't find out what it was. And Baldy, Baldy weren't the sort of manager that he didn't like injured players. If he was injured, uh, he didn't have a lot of time for you. So, yeah, yeah well, the year, the, 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 the year before that, we were playing and we were buzzing, absolutely buzzing. We'd gone unbeaten. The first 20 games of the season, I think we'd gone unbeaten. And we were playing at, at Tottenham in the FA Cup, I think, or the League Cup, one of them. And uh, I'd gone over on my knee and we thought we'd done my cartilage. Anyway, I went to see a specialist. She went, yeah, you've probably done your cartilage. We had about 10, 15 games to go. And um, I just played on tablets and injections, you know, didn't train. But I, it, I struggled. 
And mm. anyway, I went in to have the operation, and Bobby hardly, hardly spoke to me. I went in to have the operation, and the, the surgeon went, it's the biggest cartilage job I've, I've ever done. So Baldy come up like, and to be fair to him, he did say, look, I'm really sorry. He said, um, I didn't realise it was that bad. But yeah, and then, so I've got an injury and um, I've got promotion. And to be, you know, I started to speak to Millwall a little bit and uh, I didn't really want to leave because I'd spent um, like two and a half years trying to get in the, the old first division. Of course. I thought it'd be, you know, it'd be nice to give it a go with the boys and see how we get on. Mm. But it was pretty obvious that... Uh, he, he, you know, he's accepted a bid for Millwall, and it was strange because uh, I went and spoke to Millwall, more or less agreed terms and what I was going to do. And uh, I was sitting indoors, and and uh, I get a phone call from uh, this fellow. He goes, "Hello, Mick." And I went, "No, this ain't Mick." I said, "This is uh, you got the wrong number." He went, "No, this is Mick." I went, "No, it's not Mick." And I said, hey, "Who is this?" He said, uh, "Oh, it's Jackie Charlton." I went, "What?" He said, uh, well, how have I got your number? I said, well, I live, I, Mickey Kennedy, our captain, lived probably about 15 doors down from me, and then phone numbers were one digit difference. Anyway, he says to me, um, you fancy a game this weekend? I went, mm, yeah. So did he know who you was, or did he just get your name wrong? No, yeah, then he, then he said, oh, you play for Ireland as well. So I don't think it was a wind-up with him or what, you know? He could have just, instead of saying, hello, Kev, I'm Jackie Charlton, he's gone, who is this? And this is what he said. He went, Mick. I went, this ain't Mick. I said, who is this? It's a wind-up. Anyway, cast on his He said, oh, you play for Ireland. He said, what position do you play? He wouldn't know where I played. And uh, he said, do you fancy a game? He said, we've got Brazil on Saturday. <laughs> And then, we, and, then, and then we've got, um, I think it was Norway, Denmark was somewhere away in the, in the um, qualifying for the World Cup, the Italy World Cup. So I said, yeah, okay. So anyway, I went to, um, <laughs> so I was still negotiating with Millwall and didn't know what to do. And uh, He picks the team, so I get there on the, th on the Friday and we're doing a bit of, Pat and play, and I'm in the team against Brazil. Now I've been on the on the lash for like because we got promotion with Portsmouth, and believe me, we believe me, we were a big drinking team. Uh, we'd been on it, so I wasn't fit, and so I, I remember saying to Liam Brady, "Jesus, I don't know how I'm going to do, do in this game." He said, "Don't worry about it. We're all in the same boat. We've all been like about a week off or wherever it was." Anyway, um, just. For before we're leaving for the, the hotel to go to the game, Jackie Jolton comes to me and said, um, oh, by the way, Alan Ball's over there. He wants to have a word with you. Went, what? So I went over. He went, look, I know we've accepted a bid, but if you don't want to go, you don't have to. I'd rather, you know, you stay. And uh, it's like, whatever. Um, I was more or less concentrating on the game, you know, and we're playing Brazil, one of the best teams, you know. And uh, I've gone out there and had an absolute blind. I played out in the skin. Uh, we've beaten one nil. First time, uh, I think it was a big documentary in Ireland about it a little while ago. I'd done an interview for. Um, yeah, and then I come back and then decided I said, as ah, it, they've accepted it. Uh, said I'll give it a go, not knowing that I knew they were Mill were going to try and make a push that year. They was, said they were going to sign uh, Cass and a couple of other players come in. And uh, yeah, just and then again, like another two and a half unbelievable years, you know. Okay, so many questions uh, I want to ask you on the back of what you just said. So yeah, yeah. Just like, I don't know. Just first of all, like, I want to talk about Bob Pearson, Alan Ball, and, and Jackie Chalwell. Bob Pearson, by the way, you, you wouldn't have seen yeah, it in yeah. our previous videos. He just seems to be like a almost like an like an FBI sort of agent, like from the future or so. He just seems to appear and everywhere in every deal that ever happened and. Just seems to be timeless. Like we've heard stories of you about Bob Pearson. We've heard stories from people like the two thousands talking about Bob Pearson. Like it just seems to yeah, be yeah. A, a massive part of the yeah. structure for a long, long time. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, if it weren't for Bob Pearson and the, the talent that he brought in, you know, like uh, and and got sold to keep the club going as well. You know, keep when they were struggling. Um, he was some un uh, unbelievable scout. Just unbelievable. He, I mean, I. You know, obviously, when you're a kid, I like Bob. 
he's, he's now signed. But I remember when I, when I come back to uh, Millwall and he'd been involved in the first team. Like he said, I've been involved in the first team with Doc and with George Brown. He said, but I really want to get back into the youth team. I want to win the FA Youth Cup again. I'll tell you what, the next year, they won it with... Um, Mark Beard. What, who? Mark Beard. Yeah, Andy. With, the, with the players, was uh, Andy uh, Roberts and all yeah. that lot. That's just how good he was. I mean, he could just go back and... and it, like, for me, what win the FA Youth Cup is unbelievable. But yeah, I'm um, just... Probably one of the best scouts that's ever lived, in my opinion. I've covered about 30 years worth of Mill history and they all say, everyone says the same thing, like, brilliant, loved him. Like, he basically had a massive say in, especially what we'll get onto in a minute, you going back to the club, had a major part in the promotion pushes and, and things like that we've had down the years through bringing in quality players and he just seemed to always be in and around it and like, talking players into joining. But um, also, like, I don't know, Alan Ball, what's he up there? Alan Ball, what's his game? Like, you said like he was giving you like the sort of cold shoulder. Did he think you, did he think when he, and then when he realised how bad it was, did he think he was tossing off a bit or something? I can't work it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard that that's a lot. That's mustn't he? Yeah, that's why, like, when he came over uh, and said, like, oh, you don't have to go, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, really? Why would you accept, you know? But I, I, did, I did actually hear um, through um, Mickey Kennedy, who, he, who when Baldy got the sack from, but I'll, yeah, we'll get into that. So I'll tell you. So, so I, obviously I went to Millwall. So I don't know if I'm, Straying off track here, but yeah, then that's fine. right. So obviously, then I'll go. I'll go back to Millwall. We get promotion. Now I scored the goal that got me got Portsmouth against Millwall actually down at Pompey. Really? We beat. We beat. Yeah, because we beat Millwall. I think it was two one. I scored a free kick in the top corner, and um, during the week, uh, someone had to lose, and, and we got promotion, and they did. So I scored the goal, and then I scored the penalty. Uh, at Holt for yeah. get promotion, you know. So, but Pompey went down and we went up. So that was the, uh, you know, the, um, quite quite satisfying. Yeah, oh mate, definitely. And the, the third and final <laughs> thing, just covering what you said, it's not in my notes. Jack Charlton rings up. I'm sure I've heard somewhere else on a different podcast. I've definitely heard that he, he was famous for getting people's names wrong, things like that. To ring someone, well, you got my name wrong. <laughs> In the phone call, it's usually me. like it's something you're in vets football five aside. You fancy a game Saturday? Do you fancy Bobby Robson? We're yeah. playing Brazil, <laughs> and then we end up winning one nil. Liam Brady scores the winner, and uh, it's the biggest thing they ever talk about in Ireland. I mean, I don't know if it's obviously they got to the World Cup as well, but um, yeah, I mean, Jack was um, I, I didn't really have a lot to do with him to be fair. I, I only played that that one game, and I went back to Milwaukee. I got, I got injured a bit. I didn't. Well, the team that got promotion. To be fair, I only I played at the beginning about five or six games or seven games. I think. Then that injury that I was talking about that I had at Portsmouth the year before come back. I was going to say and, the uh, you spoke about so far. Are they reoccurring injuries or all different injuries? No, it was no. It was this. It was all to do with my calves, and uh, we we'd found someone at um, Blackheath the Bupe Hospital, that diagnosed it as this thing called uh, compartment syndrome. And it's, he's, uh, he only seen it in marathon runners when they got it in their thighs. It's when the muscle just takes on so much blood and then it, it uh, blocks it. So now if you sit on your hand and your hand goes numb, mm. it was like, oh, the, 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 the day, that I, the week that I went in to have the, the operation, we played Shrewsbury at home that you were, uh, and we were getting beat 2-0 uh, by Shrewsbury or 3-0. You imagine the crowd. They were absolutely giving it to us. And we'd got, we'd need to go back. And just before half time, uh, I couldn't feel my feet. And we got a penalty. And um, I took the penalty by, I just kicked it. I think I kicked the floor, kicked the ball, and the keeper dived over the ball. It went in the back of the net. And that was, and then I went and had the op. And... Uh, yeah, and then I, I sort of was, took me about six, five, six weeks to get fit. And then I came in the team, I'll never forget it, at Reading away, me and uh, Steve, is it Steve Wood? Yeah, no, Steve Wood. Yeah, Steve Wood, yeah. We Steve both Steve. came in and we played the last 15 games. And obviously, I think we won them all, didn't we, except the last game. Sorry, yeah, let's get on to it then, what we're talking about. Um, after seven years away from the club, you make a return in 1987, this time till 1991. 
playing 89 times and scoring 14 goals. Um, was there other interest again? What was it like? What was it like to go to leave Millwall as, as no disrespect, almost as a boy? Do you know what I mean, and come back as a man with with honours. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, no, and, it was... and a club in such a better position as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a, a, a strong position to push. I, I didn't realise we were going to get promotion. You know, I just thought we'd have a decent team, and I didn't realise that a lot of the likes of Terry Erlock and Briley and. Obviously, I knew uh, Rhino, you know, from youth teams and stuff. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, you knew something. But, obviously, Teddy and Cass just were buzzing up front. Um, yeah, and it was just, as I said before, it was just brilliant. I mean, they were, I mean, you talk about Teddy, like world-class player. At the time, Cass probably had the best year he ever had, you know. Even after he left me, I don't think he ever scored anywhere apart from, was it, Marseille in the old second division in France, but um, yeah, no, I mean, it was great, and we had a brilliant bunch of lads, you know, absolute bunch of nutcases, and we were all just all got on well. Just we just laughed from the minute we got in to the you know, minute we left, it was brilliant. So, I, good. Like I mean, I remember Teddy, um, Teddy, even Teddy says all the stuff that he's done, that's the best uh, bunch of lads that he's ever had, you know. Yeah, well, we have heard some stories, um. From Brian Orn and Kenny Cunningham and a few others, we've heard some really funny stories. So we we, we got the sort of gist of all that. But um, what was he like for you, the Doc? Doc was great. Yeah, he he was funny. You know, he was like all he would do is tell you about how good a player he was, but, but um, and that how how high he could jump and stuff like that. But no, he was brilliant. You know, we obviously you know you know we played this long ball uh, football, which I'd never ever seen in my life. Obviously, I'd seen the Wimbledon do it and but I've never played it I always we always played uh, football at Ipswich and at, obviously at Portsmouth we got it down and played but I just had to get used to this way of playing and get the flick-ons off of Teddy or Cass and and it was effective you can't knock it you know although sometimes it's not great to watch but I'm sure the uh, Mill supporters that year loved it because it was effective you know we were scoring goals yeah but with you and Jimmy Carter on the wings and all, they, they had some, I know they scored some goals and they was a great combo, uh, Cass and Teddy, but they must, they had some serious service off YouTube, boys, let's have it right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they did, yeah. I mean, I was always like, um, I was like, took all the corners, all the free kicks and, you know, so yeah, I was, that was probably my forte really, is mm. dead ball kicks and stuff like that. So yeah, I just made a few goals from, yeah. You scored a few pens as well. You mentioned a pen you scored earlier, I think for, um, Pompey and our free kick for Pompey and one against Hull. Before Hull, obviously, we're on the verge of promotion. We got a Bournemouth away. Do you remember that night? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was funny because um, they, the goalkeeper for Portsmouth, that, uh, sorry, for Bournemouth that night was Jerry Payton, and Jerry Payton played for Ireland. And like, I always sort of used before, like goalkeeping coaches were about. I always used to like warm the goalkeepers up, you know, with crosses because it helped my game. And uh, if I ever used to chip. Uh, Peyton used to get the right arm. So um, we're playing uh, Bournemouth. I, mean, I remember we get a penalty. It must have been similar to um, similar to Hull. We, I think it was in like the first five minutes. Mm. And uh, to be fair, it was the worst penalty I took. I kicked the floor and he dived over it. Stevens running a good 30 yards to take this throw in. That looked like a penalty. Is a penalty, I think. Yes. It's a blatant push in the back, right in front of the referee, and you don't get away with that sort of thing. Referee so experienced as Brian here. Callaghan going to take the penalty kick. Ten minutes gone. One nil for Millwall. To be fair, every time I took a penalty, the pressure was on. You know, it weren't like because who the game? Bef, who did we play before Hull? We battered them at home, something like four nil. Was it Huddersfield or someone like that? It, it, it might be game like, before uh, Hull. But that was the only time I took a penalty, and we were like two or three nil up. Other than that, we were like losing, or it was nil nil. So it was always pressure on, and I wasn't like. 
I don't think I was a natural penalty taker because I mean, uh, I always wanted to take penalties, but we were, the teams I went to, we always had great penalty takers like Johnny Walk. And when I went to Portsmouth, we had uh, Kevin Dillon, who'd never missed a penalty. Uh, but I can tell you a funny, a funny story, just getting offline a minute. We were playing Wimbledon at home, and I'll never forget it. And Kevin Dillon had been dropped. And I always wanted to get on the penalties. I've done everything else. I took everything else. I thought, why shouldn't I take the penalties? And uh, we got a penalty um, just before half time. And as uh, there was a bit of an injury, Alan Ball was trying to get Kevin Dillon on the pitch to take the penalty. And I was going, no, no. And anyway, I took it and missed. <laughs> So uh, that was my that was my one and only penalty until I'd got to Millwall and then uh, we were playing. I don't forget we was playing. It's always against my old teams. We was playing Ipswich at home. I think it was my first game, and uh, we got a penalty. And I, you know, I, I didn't know. Teddy picked the ball up and a dot shouted from the dugout to let Cali take it. I took it and then that was it. I was a penalty taker after that. And yeah, as you say, I think. The last four games of the five games, I think I took four penalties, if that's yeah. right, something like that, you know. And as you say, uh, the one at Hull, the, the one at Bournemouth was a bad penalty. The one at Hull was, yeah, weren't the greatest strike, but it was in the corner, so it was okay. Yeah. But it was, as you can imagine, the pressure was like, was on, you know. Well, mate, let's, let's talk about that day, a historic day in the history of the football club, because it is the day we got promoted and it's never happened again since hopefully maybe one day. But yeah, let's talk about that whole day, whole what you remember of it, the game, the aftermath. We've heard, we've heard some stories of the aftermath from uh, Brian Hall. Oh, have you? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, I remember, I remember, I remember it was like yesterday. Um, yeah, I remember we played, we obviously played, because it, it must have been the bank holiday weekend, mustn't it, or something like that, because we played on the, we played on a Saturday, I think, and then we played on the Monday or the Sunday, something like that. It must have been the Monday. I'm sure it was a bank holiday. And um, so we travelled up to Hull after this game. We'd, we'd beat whoever it was at home, 4-0. We were buzzing, you know, but, you know, you've got a game two games later, like, you're struggling a little bit, but they're in the same boat. And, yeah, I remember the game. I remember us playing really well first half and uh, then obviously, like, I think it was about two or three minutes the penalty was uh, given. Obviously, we had one nil up. The old city centre half, a long throw though, comes across goal and it's Cascarino. In fact, Cascarino's header going for goal and handled on the line, and the referee there, no hesitation at all. A fine header there by Cascarino, but uh, pulled up on the, uh, on the goal line. So it's a penalty now. This is a very, very important moment for Millwall. Can they go in front? The man looks like Ke uh, Kevin O'Callaghan to take it. So it's uh, Tony Norman there. O'Callaghan and he, gets, he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Well, a textbook penalty and there's always a little bit of nerves in the tummy when uh, when you get a penalty and particularly in a, a match so important to uh, Millwall. And then I think we hung on a little bit at the end, but no, I thought, I remember the day, I remember all the crowd coming on. You know, it's a funny story because um, after the game, we all run off the pitch and the crowd come on the pitch. And I remember there's a photo, it was in the South London press of all the players, uh, all I had on was some slip. And about four or five years ago, my mate said to me, um, there's a shirt on eBay that's been sold. It says it's the your championship winning team with Millwall. And it could have been because I haven't got it. I don't know where it is. And it went, I think it went for about 1,500 quid, someone said, you know. Yeah, but no, brilliant day. I remember like coming off the pitch, doing all the interviews, what we had to do, going back to the uh, hotel, and the doc said we weren't allowed out. Is this the story that all he told you with Teddy and the... Uh, we've heard a version where that he, yeah, go on, you, you tell it. <laughs> See yeah, it I, don't remember, I, don't, I don't tell him was involved with someone else. It might have been Rhino, I'm not sure. But we just all stayed at the hotel. With, I was with Terry Erlock, we was all having a drink, mucking around. Teddy got caught coming back, had been out. And uh, to be fair, I didn't agree with what the doc done. I mean, he, uh, he made, we, we travelled back the next day and uh, he made, he made, uh, Teddy and um, 
I don't know who the second player was, but they, pl- they had a reserve team game that afternoon. He made them play in the reserves. I didn't agree with that. I thought it was wrong. Mm. Yeah, he um, sent back Brian Horn as well. Sent him back in the morning. With the geezer, oh, it might have been all you then. The geezer had the minibus, made him go back and play at Welling. He said they got spanked about 5-1. That's right, yeah. Him and Teddy's. <laughs> him and Teddy's. Him and Teddy's. <laughs> went out, yeah. Yeah, I didn't agree. I thought that was wrong. I thought... Um, after what we'd done for him and, you know, got promotion, oh, they went out, but I don't know why he said we couldn't go out anyway. It was like, oh, you know, it wasn't like there was all the walls had gone home. So, yeah, uh, yeah no, it's a shame because, the, and the other thing was a shame because, you know, so we play on the Saturday then, as you said, Blackburn at home, we got bad. We, were, we just weren't in. It was like watching Liverpool play, you know, when they've already won the league and this year they come out and they just, they just you haven't got that intensity. You haven't got that. It's different, you know. You, yeah. The pressure's not there. Um, yeah, and it was a shame, really, because we'd done we'd done a little bit on the pitch with a cup, but the, the police wouldn't let us do, um, you know, the coach journey down the old Ken Road or nothing like that. So, you know, really, because we'd done it. I'd done it the year before with Portsmouth, yeah. and it was great. You know, all the, all the streets were lined, and it was a shame they they just wouldn't let us do it. Mm. So we move into the top flight. The nineteen would be eighty eight, eighty nine season, wouldn't it? Yeah, the first one. Yeah, right. Yeah, a brilliant season. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, we've done pre season. I don't think we've done. I don't. We hadn't really played well in pre season. We'd gone away and uh, we'd gone up to Kiel, I think, to do this fitness uh, thing, and I tried to changed the way we trained and bits and pieces. And I didn't think we, we, we really had, had a good pre-season. And uh, died the season. I think it was um, Aston Villa away, wasn't it? Uh, 2-2. But we tuned him up and played really well. And yeah, from then until, I think it was Christmas time, it was unbelievable. I think we, didn't we, we went top of the league. Did we beat Queen's Park Rangers at home? I think we went top of the league. That's right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it was fantastic. And then obviously it was it was tough up there because yeah, we did that we had a good team, but we had to be playing at 110 percent all the time, you know, to get these results. I think it took took its toll in the end. I remember I played probably the I missed the last I had a bit of an argument with Doc at like he dropped me. Um we played Tottenham at home and he dropped me. Never said a word to me. And uh, so I did play the last four. I had a bit of a row with him after that. Oh, on a Monday, I had a row with him. He didn't play me. Um, but uh, so I played like, was it 36? Was it 42 games in them days? Or was it yeah, 42, 42? Yeah. yeah, 42. I played about 35 games solid. On the other side, you'd had uh, Budgie Byrne was playing, George um, Lawrence and Jimmy. They sort of shared it between them. Mm. And I must admit, I was absolutely shattered by the end of the season. Um, but no, it was brilliant. I mean, and then it all went a bit pear shaped after that, really, you know. But who was that first you know, name you said there on the right hand side? Who was that first name you said? A Burn. What was his name? Um, we should call him Budgie Burn. Uh, David, David Burn, is it? Little white winger. Fast Steve, little white winger. Stevenson? No. Uh, yeah, Steve-O came in as well, didn't he? Yeah, that's another one, yeah. Yeah, we, we went interviewed Steve-O a couple of weeks ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, so there was another one. He made, uh, that, was a, that was a story at the... Um, did you hear about the uh, Liverpool? The Liverpool story? No, mate. Well, listen, that's, I've got, obviously, the promotion season, but any, any, any games and any memories that sticks out for you? So, Steve-O, Steve-O, you must know Steve-O's debut was at Liverpool when he scored an unbelievable goal. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. So... We'd gone up there on the Friday and they'd just signed Steve-O. And uh, I used to room with Terry Erlock and <laughs> our room was 113 and Terry wouldn't go, wouldn't go near it. He said, no, I'm not. I said, Terry, look, listen, that's all I'm crap, all this unlucky 13. He went, oh, all right, and we went in the room and whatever we'd done. And uh, we, played on, we played at Liverpool and to be fair, we played fantastic at the first half. We batted Liverpool. Went one new up, second half. Um, I've gone into the box, had a bit of a dribble, and Ronnie Whelan literally topped me. There is a picture in one of the papers of my shin was like spread open, like, and I'm on the floor, and uh, 
Frank McClintock saying, get up, get up, you're all right. Comes on the pitch to have a look and faints. My leg was like completely split open. Frank McClintock fainted. Yeah, he nearly fainted. Uh, and um, so I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the uh, dressing room trying to get stitched up by this doctor that was absolutely had too much to drink. I, they had no anaesthetic or nothing. He was putting 16 stitches in my shin. Unbelievable. And uh, oh, so I'm, I'm, I'm laying there in agony with this doctor um, putting stitches in me and Terry comes in with broken ribs. <laughs> so he says to me, I told you about that room. <laughs> so <laughs> ever since then, I've been a little bit skeptical about it myself now, yeah. But no, yeah, so, I mean, yeah, Steve, I made his debut in that game, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was great. I mean, we drew 1-1. One, one. That was early on in the, that was, that would have, yeah, that was early on, and then we struggled towards the end of the season, you know. But I still think, when did we come in the end? About halfway or something? Uh, yeah, that, roughly, yeah, about for about 12th, I think, something like that. But I never had Terry Earlock down as a superstitious type. What was he like to room with on away days? Yeah, he's good, yeah. We used to, um, we used to, like, try and fight each other, and, you know, he's just a tough, tough old boy. But, uh, yeah, he was brilliant. We used to just laugh our heads off, you know, um, about things that happened and... Did you hear about the story about when the, pa the papers came into the hotel? No. It was in, they'd done a big spread about Cascarino and Sheringham running through the corridor naked and stuff like that. Have you <laughs> never heard that story? No, go on. So we were we playing Southampton at um, Southampton. So we're in the hotel, me and Terry uh, laying in bed watching telly. And, and uh, this fella came and said, excuse me, boys, any chance we just... Clean the windows. We looked at each other thinking, what? I said, yeah, yeah go on and do what you like, mate. So anyway, that happened. And I can hear like the boys mucking around outside. Uh, on the Sunday or the, the next Sunday in the news of the world, there was this big thing about, um, and it was obviously this fellow was, he, he started asking us questions as he's doing the windows, you know? Yeah. We, did, we still didn't like, because it was pretty early on about all this, uh, you know, undercover detect, uh, reporters and stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, done the big spread about Cascarino and Sharon and running around the corridor naked and stuff. And but yeah, me and Terry had to, that was, he pretended to be a window cleaner, and we must have been nuts, you know. But no, it was brilliant. We had a great time. Mister Love to brilliant. You said you really fancied the chances of getting into the top flight with Pompey, and you wanted to stay there for that reason. What was it like once you got into the top flight, the, the standard? Was it that much better? And talking about, obviously, you on the left and Aston Villa that day, you had a, you had a brilliant um, wingman fullback in uh, Ian Dawes. Dawes yeah, yeah. yeah, Dawes, it came in. Like, to be fair, it took over from uh, Nicky Coleman. And, you know, to be fair to Nicky, Nicky was a brilliant one of the... He never... The, the crowd used to get on his back a bit, but... Still, I'd still say Nicky's one of the best defenders I've ever played with. Maybe not as not that good on well, Dorsey was good on the ball, you know, and uh, so the crowd appreciated him a little bit more. But yeah, so no, I, got, I had a good understanding with Dorsey and we've done well for a couple of years, yeah. The game for me that stands out, because obviously this is now the era of the Kevin O'Callaghan that, that I remember, um, was I think it was the first televised game ever, well, in my lifetime that I remember, was, was the Norwich at home game. Yeah, yeah. That's the game that was two 0 down after about ten minutes, two two before half time. You had a good hand in a couple of those goals, didn't you? I remember. I didn't know it, but I think it hit the bar of a header as well, diving header, and uh, yeah, that Flecky got an unbelievable goal, didn't he, in the last minute or something? I'll never forget that game. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember that like it was yesterday. Yeah, what was it? Well, that? The Den, obviously, I've, I've left it to now to ask you because the Den, obviously, when you was at first at the club and you was a youngster. Struggling four or five thousand bottom division. Now we're in the top flight, sold out every week. What was it like to be so close to the intense crowd on the wing, like every week? Could you hear, like, hear people like breathing down your ear on things like that? Yeah, I got a bit of stick as usual, but yeah, I mean, to be fair, I wasn't. I've got to admit, I wasn't. I wasn't brilliant in them, them days. I was, I was still struggling with legs, and so yeah, I got a bit of stick, but. Uh, yeah, no, it was good. I mean, the atmosphere was good, and but uh, it's strange because you go to these clubs, and I, I played at Portsmouth, and we had a team that was unbelievable, and probably lost about five or six games in three years. And the crowd, if we weren't winning two 0 by half time, the crowd was on our back. 
I went back there when I went back to Millwall to do um, coaching, and then I was doing a bit of scouting as well. And I, I had to go and watch down at Portsmouth. They were playing Bradford at home, getting beat 4 0. And the, the crowd was singing Pay Up Pompey and Ball His Boys, and it was like, what? It's just expectation, isn't it? You've got a good team, and you know, mm. I remember we played, I remember I was playing um, Queen's Park Rangers at Queen's Park Rangers, and the, and the Millwall crowd giving Teddy unbelievable stick, you know, and it was like, hold on, do you know where we are here? We're in the, like, Div 1. Mm. Uh, but, I don't know, that's just a fickle sport as I really are, you know. Yeah, mate, very true, very true. So, the second season, it's an interesting one, because obviously, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a if I can get out, a relegation season. Yeah. Um, and I didn't play it, to be fair. Sorry? I don't think I played, did I, second season? Did you not? No. Nah. I'd had, a, I'd had a bit of a, towards the end of the season, I kept getting a bit of a pain in my foot. And uh, pre-season, I snapped my foot in half. Just put my foot down, but done my metatarsal. Because uh, that was a year that, yeah, that's right. And then, obviously, the Doc got sacked halfway through, didn't he? Yeah, and this um, is something like a lot of the players said. They say that, you know, Doc, they, a lot of, few of the players we spoke to on, on this show said that they put it down to the Doc being too loyal to the players. He should have got other players in. He was too loyal to the to the original squad, and that's what ended up getting in the sack. Do you remember when he was sacked? Yeah, I remember when he was sacked. Yeah, and I, uh, yeah, a little bit, but I think I, I, just, I just think they bought they bought some players in, didn't they? Who didn't really do it for us as well. Uh, but Paul Goddard come in, and mm. you know, we all knew he was. I think that's the other thing as well. When you know our players come in, he's on a lot of money, and you know, he's not really. A uh, couple of other players came in and there wasn't really... I mean, to, it's hard because I wasn't playing. I broke my foot, I was struggling. Uh, and I'm just sitting there watching this and it was, you know, it, yeah, it weren't, it weren't great. Um, then I remember, then it was... What's his name who came in? Yeah, well, Doc. Doc got sacked. Uh, Bob Pearson took over. The, uh, yeah, the ever present that is Bob Pearson for the last 10 games. We get relegated. And then in the 1991 season is the... The start of the Bruce Rioch, Sergeant Bruce Rioch. A lot of now we've had a lot of stories on Bruce. None of them good, if I'm honest. From ex-players, none of them good. Yeah, uh, none of mine would be good about Bruce. So I don't <laughs> really want to go there with him. You know, no. Really? He weren't my favourite man, mate. Like some outrageous stories. Apparently, he walked in first day and said, "Fine, unshaven. Fine, no tie. Fine." Um, Terry Earl, after about half an hour, went, "Fuck this. Put me on the list. Put me on the transfer list. I've got to get out of here." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I remember we, uh, the funniest story was we, he, um, it must have been, whether it was the end of the season or the, we went to, he took us to, um, yeah, it must have been the end of the season, he took us to uh, Tenerife, but instead of going to the player Dunstan Americas, he took us on Santa de la Cruz where the old people are. <laughs> so we, uh, about 10 of us went right. Two, two pluses and cash were going to play down Americas and just went down there for five days. And he sent um, Les Briley down to get us. We won't come back. Uh, but no, he was a, you know, I don't know if he, 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 uh, he just pick on, he'd pick on the, the kids, you know, he wouldn't pick on the, the older players. Um, really? And I didn't like, no, no. Again, the start of really of a transitional period for the club. Cass went, uh, Terry went. Um, did Les Briley go at that point? I can't remember, but no, he would have done. You said he come down to, uh, he sent him down to get you. No, know. I don't think Les went. No, I don't think Les so, went. Some yeah. other players that come in, obviously, say uh, Big Mick McCarthy would go on to let him manage the club uh, and succeed Bruce Rioch, Alex Ray, John Goodman, Malcolm Allen. What were those yeah, yeah. Like? I mean, uh, there's a famous video of a game where we, I don't know if you don't think you played in it, but we're 2 0 down against Sheffield Wednesday, come back and win 4 2. And the goals yeah, the well, play with Jimmy, big... Cass, Malcolm. Oh, I, yeah, I came on and made two or three goals, didn't I? Yeah, I, so was it, no, was that the FA Cup game? And then we went up there on the. No, it's the, four, uh, the FA Cup game was 4 all went up there. And we went up there, yeah. It was around the same time, but we beat them 4 2, yeah. That was my, that was my, um, yeah, that was my big fallout with Bruce Rioch. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't know. I didn't. I, I played a few games. I got fit. Played a few games. To be fair, to play for, he was all right. You know, it's just 
mm. off the pitch. You know. Watch some well, of the well, highlights. Was... Like some, some good football being played under him. Was there? Right, some good yeah. goals. Got some good goals. Play some good football. Yeah, team. I mean, he, he wanted he wanted you to play and you encourage you to get on the ball. And I, I thought that side of him was really good. Mm. Uh, just didn't agree with the way he dealt with things off the pitch, really. You know, mm. and um, you know, I had a few forming nights of him. I mean, I'll tell you one story. We, we, as you said, we, 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 we play Sheffield Wednesday at home. I think we were beat, getting beat. I don't know, four one or whatever. I came on, made three goals, go up there for the replay. To be fair, I think we got bad up there. We weren't very good. Um, we had Ipswich at home on the Ipswich away on the uh, on the Saturday, and I'd already found out from all you that he'd spoken to Bruce and he uh, agreed for him to stay up there. So I. Um, I said to Bruce on the Friday, uh, obviously, you know, come, I had a load of friends up there, I wanted to stay up there. And um, he went, I'll let you know after the game. So anyway, we, I thought something was up. We'd get there and he, he dropped me. I was on the sub, on the subs bench. Anyway, I just, to be fair, I just went on the coach, got my gear. And to be fair, Stevie Harrison, the coach was saying, please have whatever. I went, no, all he's staying down, I'm staying down. Um, anyway, I go in the... Uh, I actually bumped into a reporter that night, someone I thought I could trust, and I chatted to him. He was a local reporter that was at Ipswich when I was there, but he was, used to do a little bit of work for the News of the World. I woke up the next day, he's a big reporter. Yeah, he stitched me right up. Yeah. Anyway, I go, go in on the, on the Monday, and he find me two weeks' wages. And I said, I ain't paying it. And uh, anyway, I took him to... Um, it was funny because uh, obviously I, after that I played quite a bit and he tried to get his uh, assistant to come in and say, look, don't take him to the tribunal. I went, no, I'm not paying two weeks wages, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I ended up paying about, I got off with it. I mean, I think the, the PFA were after him, that he'd done a couple of naughty things, I think, and uh, yeah, ended up paying about 30 quid, but that was a big fallout of him after that. It was never the same, really. Yeah, it's um, someone else you just brushed on there. We should, we've had some, some funny, funny stories on. But not just funny stories, apparently a brilliant, brilliant coach, Steve Harrison. Yeah, absolutely nuts. Yeah, funny. <laughs> so you know the famous one, obviously, when that's where he got the sack from England over, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, John Goodman explained that one, yeah, in detail. But yeah, so we don't need to go there. <laughs> oh, we don't have to go on that one. But it, 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 we went, this was my, do you know what? It was really strange because keep saying about my last game. Um, we played someone at home. I said, I can't remember what we've got to be. And to be fair, I didn't play well. We'd gone down to the uh, West Country, uh, Dart, Dartmoor or somewhere like that, staying in this really nice hotel. And Bruce Stink wasn't coming down until the Tuesday. So Steve Harrison was looking after us. And it was like, <laughs> it was absolutely crazy. You know, we were like, on the, on the, we were playing, we had a nice golf course, we were playing golf, having a few drinks having a few drinks at night and I remember looking up and Steve Allison swinging on the chandelier uh, and we're like, what's he doing? Like, you know, even we weren't doing that, but absolutely. I remember him, we, so we played, yeah, so this was on the Sunday. On the Monday, he said, right, we're all training. Went, yeah, okay. So and Bruce hadn't come down. He said, we, we'll train by the hotel and, uh, and this hotel was on a hill. It had this really steep hill and down the bottom was a pond. And he just started to, he just got on his hands and he just started to roll. We think he's going to stop in a minute. And he goes straight, it was freezing cold. <laughs> but absolutely crazy. I mean, it's funny, it's funny. And a brilliant coach as well. I mean, I'm sure people said he was a brilliant. He just keep you happy, you know, because we weren't really happy under Bruce, but he used to keep everyone, you know, on an even kill. Yeah. But, um, uh, it was absolutely crazy. Yes, yeah, so anyway, so Bruce comes down on the Tuesday and uh, <laughs> it, it was me, Malcolm Allen, and someone else had got dropped and he made us stay behind with the, with the, um, with the physio at the hotel and do a little bit. And that, the, the um, first two were going to a training pitch somewhere. And uh, Stevie said, well, you lot get in the, in the coach. I'll, I'll take the car. And no, he had the minibus, that's right. Steve had the minibus and Bruce said, oh, with his coach, I'll follow you. He went, okay. So 
because Steve said, I know where it is. So they're driving down the road, all of a sudden Steve tur turns in, does a right, goes around this um, roundabout in a, in a really posh garden, you know, like one of these gardens that have got, you can go in and out of, goes around there twice and comes back out. And then it was a, <laughs> so we get to the training ground and Bruce didn't see the funny side of it. And I think he find, I think he find him. I think well, that's coach. it. Yeah, I think so. You'd have to find out, but honestly, it just didn't. It, you know, he didn't see the funny like what he'd done. It was just ridiculous. It was, but he was absolutely crazy. The stuff he used. He'd tip. A, we'd be drinking on a not drinking. We'd be having our uh, meal on a Friday night, and he'd go, "Can I have a jug of water, please?" And the waiter bring a jug of water, and he'd just pour it on his head, on the table. You know, and we're all sitting there thinking, "What?" He'd go in the kitchen and call Mayhem in the kitchen. But it was just that Bruce didn't appreciate, you know, nothing, you know, anything that was uh, yeah. having a laugh off the, off the pitch, didn't appreciate none of that, no. It sounds, it was like, fun. It sounds like a relationship that was destined to fail between them two. Oh, my <laughs> God, yeah. It didn't take long, yeah. He got him out, yeah. On my notes, I've just made the note before I forget, because you, although their names are in it, the Mep and Maulers I've written down, I'm going to yeah, call yeah, them, because, yeah. again, in the Malcolm Allen interview, you featured heavily for... Uh, being guilty of inflicting that those mad two onto the little picturesque town of Meppo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know what. I just they both came down like more or less at the same time, and uh, I just happened to mention them. My missus works at the local uh, state agents, and and there'd been this really beautiful uh, big mansion that uh, was being uh, you know chopped down into flats, and she sold them one of them each and then obviously yeah we had a few uh few late nights let's put it that way <laughs> on the on the on the source yeah so i wasn't really playing so it didn't really matter to me but them two were playing so uh they had to be a bit careful yeah, yeah. but no 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 i sort of uh no it was good yeah um moving on to obviously you left the club under bruce Rioch. Moved yeah up to south end what, what was that like leaving the club a second time was it something you yeah. wanted to do? Was it, was, did you know it was coming? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't really want it coming. I didn't want to... I, I knew it was coming. Uh, again, that wasn't... The way Bruce handled that, that wasn't a very nice way, the way he'd done that. Uh, he came in one day, give me a letter. There's about two games. I think They got in the playoffs that year, didn't they? They got in the playoffs. Yeah, that's right. And yeah. I, I played a few games. I said I hadn't gone down. I think it was a, after that Dartmouth trip. They played Bristol City, I think, I don't know, they, I think they won actually. Um, and then that week he came in with a letter to me saying, oh, you've got a free transfer, blah, blah, blah. Said to me, get off the grounds now. What? I went, what? He went, get off the grounds now. I said, you, you, what are you going to do about it anyway? He said, oh, I'll call the police. I went, oh, you know. Um, but no, it wasn't, yeah, I don't think people know what he was doing behind the scenes. It weren't very nice, no. But yeah, I... I to be honest, I was struggling with injuries. I weren't fit. Uh, I had a couple of phone calls from people. Uh, Webby, no, Webby's assistant had rang me. I, put, I asked for too much money. They went, oh, no, and I was, I was struggling. I just said, uh, to be fair, it was Bob Pearson got on the phone with Dave Webb and said, look, he's prepared to take this, blah, blah, blah. And we, we, yeah, we've done the deal. And, but I was struggling, you know, I wasn't, my legs were, I was really in a bad way. I went down there and I, I was, I was embarrassed actually. You know, I was really, I wasn't the player I was. Mm. I was struggling, and I really, I, you know, you, I felt guilty. I really did feel guilty for taking the money. If you're, if you're I, good and they're prepared to give you a contract and you pass a medical, no, no, yeah, it was no, a long no, time no, retired, no. mate, aren't they? Still, I still didn't feel right about it. Um, and then, to be fair, I didn't play. They had a good team, actually. You brought a lot of young players, like uh, Pally, who went on to play Nicky and uh, a few other players. They had a really good team. And to be fair, they, they, well, I, I played the first five, five or six games, and then the team went on an unbelievable... I think we were second in the league at one time. And then Webby got a sack, and uh, then they brought in... Um, oh, I can't remember his name now. Absolute fruit loop he was. Murphy. Uh, is it Colin? Not... Colin Murphy, uh, was at Derby. Can't remember his name. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It weren't great. Uh, I was struggling. By that time, I I was having to get out of bed and get in the hot water just to get my kids going. And anything under my knee was just I was struggling with. You know, I just had a bad blood supply. And 
Then I was at the gym, my last game, I, 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 that, so I got let go by South End. I had a word with Alan McClear, he was down at Charlton. He had a word with um, Alan Kirby. He said, yeah, come down and train. I went down and trained and I was playing. Obviously, I wasn't training with the first time. I was doing pre-season. I was doing a little bit, but I was playing in the reserves under um, Peacock, Pete Peacock. And I was playing really well. I was like, hey, Peacock, you should love me, but I just couldn't get fit. And, you know, they, they, he offered me a three-month contract. I went out to train and the calf went. And then I just said, I've got a jacket in, you know. Yeah. Uh, went to see a specialist. He went, no, he said, you just, you can't do it anymore. So that was it, really. Uh, yeah, so it's a shame. But, you know, you had that. I really wanted to carry on, but I just couldn't, you know. How old was you at that point? At 31, 32, yeah. I, I, I think, you know, 31, 32 is not that old, but to consider you got in a first team at 17, 18, still had a good go, yeah. a good career, didn't you? Yeah, it's not that old, but it's a shame because you've got so much, like, knowledge and experience and I just couldn't, I just couldn't do the running. It's like, was, give me the ball, I was unbelievable. I could pass the ball, but I just couldn't do the running, you know. They, at the middle wall, they used to call me Einstein because, like, watching me warm up was a joke, you know. And my legs were just like so stiff, but uh, yeah, no, um, but uh, no, it was time to, it was time to jack in, you know. We're well, talking about your knowledge and experience. You, you, you later, oh, to be honest, to be fair, I don't even remember this. You went on to coach at Mill, said you was responsible for such talents coming through as Tim Kayo, it says on Wikipedia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how um, how did you get back to Mill in a coaching capacity? Well, it's your through, role? through Bob Pearson, yeah, I started doing the um, I started doing the under 14s and uh. And then Rhino wanted to get a bit of experience coaching. He came with us and we should do the 14s together. And then, um, you know, when the club went under administration, obviously uh, they let the staff go and uh, I went in there to do that. And then, yeah, so we had, a, we had some good, to be fair, they had some really good players. You know, we had Reedy in the under 15s at the time and a couple of other decent players. And then, yeah, by the time I, about a year later, obviously, they were all princes. And um, yeah, with the, the 2K story, was we end of the season and uh, the doc was manager again. The doc was manager, wasn't he? We had yeah. someone at Queen's Park Rangers that um, rec not recommended, but they had two players come over from Australia and said, look, we're not going to sign them. Can you have a look at them? So we had a look at them. And I, there's only me. And, I, and, we, and I said to Tim, well, look, I can't really make a decision at the moment, but why don't you go home and come back and do pre-season with us and we'll take it from there. Anyway, yeah, so we're doing pre-season and, you know, he was doing okay, but he wasn't doing, he wasn't shining or nothing. Mm. And then we had a game, first game. I'll never forget it. We were, uh, it was at the training grounds and um, we got a corner and he just, somehow, it, like, it was almost like he rose above the crossbar, went bang and nodded this ball in. And I went to the physio, you see that? He went, yeah. I said, Jesus Christ. Anyway, we had a corner back to me. It's like he'd done exactly the same thing. And then from then on, it was just, you know, he was scoring and mm. just had this amazing... Uh, he was a bit like... I don't know if you, you ever see John Wall play, but Johnny Wall could just arrive in a box and a ball come to him. And that's what Tim was like, you know? And we had to calm him down a little bit because, you know, he'd like leave the midfield. So we had to calm, had to calm down. And then, to be fair... Um, I got a sack because uh, Billy Bond came in and uh, he wanted to bring his own fella in and I left. Uh, and then he didn't last long, did he? What did he last long, Billy? Last five, six long, months? Mate, we say, is that West Ham? Yeah, it wasn't even a season, was it? That West yeah, Ham. Then Macker um... and uh, Rhino got the job and I, I got the job back as well. And then by the time I'd come back, Tim K was in the first team. So yeah. it was really, it was just, no, really hadn't, but he was just about to. Yeah. Doland. Uh, then we signed, we got Ifield from some academy in Brighton. He was in the youth team at the time. We had a good, we had a really good team. With, like, you think the back four I had uh, in a youth team was um, Tony Craig, yeah. Paul Robinson, yeah. Alan Dunn, and Mark. Who's your centre half, Mark? He does the um, went to Brentford. Yeah, oh, it's gonna, he does the uh, academy now, Mark Phillips. Yeah, Mark Phillips. Yeah, that's a back four. They were unbelievable. Uh, 
you know, midfield, we had some good players there and yeah, we had a decent little team and obviously they all went on to have great careers, you know. Yeah. After I left, but they had good careers, yeah. Yeah, so you've had, you've had two stints as a, as a senior pro at Millwall, stint as a youth team player and then you've ended up experiencing it all, mate, at a dead. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you had to pick a yeah, standout memory, one standout yeah. memory, what, what do you think it would be? Your time at the club? Oh, it's got to be the whole, up a whole, yeah. Mm. It's got to be the whole game, yeah. It's just like seeing like grown men cry and it was just, you know, for Millwall to get promotion to, you never ever thought it'd happen, would you? No, no. And I uh, say, so it hasn't again since, mate. That's why them, them times, you know, some Millwall fans say, oh, I wouldn't want to get back. I would. It wouldn't last forever, granted, but to look right, back yeah. at the times that you boys did it and, you know, the iconic videos and, and the, the kit, the Lewisham kit. The yeah, yeah. Took off your back <laughs> and sold for 50. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant times, mate. Unbelievable. Um, I always ask a question. We're going to talk about escape to victory in a minute because I'll never forgive myself if we don't. But the question yeah. to end the Millwall chat is, um, I always ask this question at the end, if you could have a night out tomorrow with three of your ex-teammates at Millwall, who would you take with you? Who I'd take with me, it would be Terry Erlock, Teddy, and Alan Walker. Alan Walker, I know it. Yeah, I don't remember him playing. Well, but... Right, so if you, if you, oh, oh, I have heard. I think if you're going to say Alan Walker, you... Alan Walker played the half the season or the whole season before Woody got in the team, the last fifteen games of the season. Right. And the doc had a bit of a falling out of him and sold him to Gillingham, which was a shame. To be fair, they brought him when we went, um, obviously then we got promotion then, because I always kept, played golf with walks. And uh, when we, in the season, doc took us to um, Barbados for two weeks. He invited walks, which was nice of him oh, to yeah. come with him. Yeah. So yeah, if I had three drinking buddies here, it'd be them, yeah. I'm sure, you know, um... Brian Horn told a story. It might have been about Alan Walker and about um, what he's packing down below. Well, I couldn't put oh, it. God, yeah, yeah. I couldn't. Um, well, I put it on the Patreon page. I couldn't put it on the actual YouTube because too many kids watch it. <laughs> so apparently, it's, um, oh yeah, it's a big boy, yeah. <laughs> apparently, you yeah, know, pinned Darren Morgan down once or something. But um, yeah, well, oh he, yeah, <laughs> pretended they put yeah aerosol. Yeah, pretended it was his wheelie. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a good. It's a good. Uh, with Terry as well and um, Teddy, that's a good, um, that's a good little foursome, mate. Right, so I've left this till last because I, I just. Oh I yeah, you wanted to know, you wanted to know about um, Bobby Robson as well, didn't you? Did I tell we talk about what Robson was like? And... Yeah, we talked about Bobby. Yeah, we talked. Well, about... talk about you talk, talk about Saint Victor because he's 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 uh, part of Scope to Victory, anyway. So yeah, he sort of comes into this because obviously Escape to Victory, nineteen eighty one. Yeah. Now, for the again, for the younger people that may not have seen it, Escape to Victory was a film, an American film, um, that was based around the Second World War on a German a German prisoner of war camp. Yeah. People might be thinking, why am I talking to you about this? And basically, the prisoners of war put together a football team to play the Germans. Yeah. I, I thought, for, in my head, as I watched it for years, that you all, you all, you all did it. If you beat them you got to get set free. But obviously, that wasn't the case. I'm sure you escaped at the end. But anyway, regardless, the cast, you was in it, along with John Walk. So I'm guessing there's, there's obviously an Ipswich connection there. Along with Bobby Moore and Mickey Summerby, this was in 1981, so you would have been an Ipswich player. Pele, Sylvester Stallone and Michael Caine were also in the film. And in the film, you play a goalkeeper. Yeah. And they have to break your arm on purpose, the other prisoners, so Sylvester Stallone can play in goal because he's unbelievable. And I remember your yeah. line was saying like, make it a clean break, Gov, wasn't it, or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just tell, mate, tell us as much as you like about this film. Well, basically, yeah, I'll tell you the story about what happened. So, so yeah, so we're, we're, I think it's about, I'm just saying, we talked about that 81, 82 season. We were unbelievable. <laughs> we'd been away, we'd been away with Ipswich. And no, so before that, Robson said to us, look, we're going to wherever we're going. He said, look, there's a chance for you to go on this. There's a film being made. They need some footballers. Um, it's in Hungary. You're going to be out there for about uh, three to four weeks. Your wife's or your girlfriends can come out for two weeks. 
uh, is the biggest budget football film ever made. They said Pelle's in it, Bobby Moore, blah, 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 blah. Said, okay, fine. So everyone's just like that. Put your hands up. I said, I'll do it. Some, uh, Russ Wasman, uh, Johnny Walk, Kevin Beatty, uh, a couple of other players that you probably... Uh, Laurie Sivill, the goalkeeper. Um, he's all, all these the, boys from Ipswich, yeah? Yeah, so when... I'll tell you the story. Yeah, so I'll tell you... I'll, carry, I'll, carry on, I'll tell you a story about Laurie Sivill. And uh, yeah, so um, anyway, we just go out to this um, thing. The day, the day um, I go out there, we, we, we're in this hotel. Have a, um, Bobby Moore was my hero. I'm from East Ham, yeah? Although I weren't a West Ham supporter, I was a Chelsea supporter. I always used to go to West Ham and Moro was like everyone's hero, you know, around East Ham. And uh, the first day, so we were in the hotel, we had a few nights, have a few drinks. We, we had a drink with, with Moro, but it was a bit quiet, so I didn't really know him. I was a young kid. But he loved me because I was from East Ham. He was from Dagenham, yeah. Moro. And uh, I've got a picture, I've still got it to this day. If we went to the, because the, the camp was a, it was about an hour and a half from, the, from Hungary. And they'd made this, it was amazing. But all, they was all like, what you see in a the film, they're all hollow apart from two or three of them. That was the canteen where we'd done the filming and where we rested when when we wasn't or, or where all the kit was. So I've got a picture of me. I'm sat here. Bobby Moore's there and Pele's on this side of me, and they took a still of me. And it's just like, is this for real? Uh, <laughs> I remember ringing my miss. I remember ringing my missus up, saying, oh, "I've just had a picture done with Pele and Bobby Moore." And she was like, "Really?" I was like, "Yeah." Um, but yeah. So anyway, so we start doing bits and pieces and. Most of the time, I don't know, obviously you know what I feel, you've done something, filming's like so boring. Yeah. Something comes over, you've got to stop and you've got to change the camera. So we're, most of the time we're playing football with Pele. Pele was amazing, he just wanted to play football. Moro would play, he would just sit there. Pele was just, we put, so you know when you see football today and you see two people in the middle and you get a crowd around the outside and they keep the ball. So Pele said, come on, let's play this, we're playing this. And uh, Russ Wasman, who was an England player at the time, fancied himself a little bit. <laughs> Ball sort of comes between him and Pele, and it's like a 50-50. And Pele stabs it, and as he stabs it, Russ Wasman sort of runs that way. The ball goes that way for a little one, spins back behind him, and we just all laughed our heads off. It was just like, but, you know, so that's, that's what we were doing. And then we, then we got this uh, memo through uh, while we was at the hotel. said, look, the players that they, they were, they were like start, they were like from, um, from Belgium and that, that, that were going to do the talking. They were players. And he said, um, it's no good. They're broke, it's broken English. We need people that can speak English. So I said, right, can you all go and do a voice test? So we went and done voice test and that's how we got the talking parts. Right. Um, yeah, so uh, I ended up, they just said, right, you're whoever I was. I think it was like oh, Tony someone and Russell Wasman got a speaking part and so did uh, Walkie, Johnny Walk. Um, so it was brilliant, you know, and then, yeah, so I had to, so basically then you're given a script. So I'm given a script and the day, the, the day after, uh, so you don't know where, you don't know when they're going to do this thing, but you've just got to read your lines. And uh, so anyway, they said, Right, this afternoon, you're doing the, the bit with um, Michael Caine. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. But, you know, Michael Caine was brilliant with me because Michael Caine, as you know, was from The Elephant and Castle. Yeah. And uh, when he found out I'd played for Millwall, he was like, we were chatting and he was such a nice fella. And, uh, yeah, so I had to do the famous bit where he, he um, breaks me arm. But to be fair, can I not swear on this, no? You can, mate, yeah. I can say, yeah, so I was shitting myself, you know. Um, I've got to do this thing with, like, Michael Caine, and it's like... And he was brilliant to me. He just said, look, relax, just do it. And all, as you said, he, he had to say to me, um, oh, really sorry, but as you said... Because to be fair, when you're doing this filming, you, we don't know that my leg... I don't know my arm's being broken, so Stallone can... We're just doing filming, so then they just put it together, you know, obviously, yeah, what yeah, yeah. you do here. So anyway, yeah, so and I've done it first first take as it goes. I'm so, gonna watch how many takes because yeah. yeah, I've done it. I've done it first take. But um yeah, so I mean it was brilliant. Oh, what can you say? I mean I, I when uh, 
and Ozzy Ardenis was there. I mean, me, him and his wife used to go out quite a bit. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Like it was, we, in the evening, we used to go to this restaurant and uh, Pele weren't at the same hotel as us. But one night he came down with his, he used to have a, uh, like a assistant, a little fella, nice fella. And uh, he, he would come in and say to the waiter, bottle of brandy, uh, we'd have our meal and Pelle would just drink his bottle of brandy and get his guitar out and apps. I mean, you can't <laughs> believe it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, we'd have a sing song and it was just, just living a dream. It was just like, uh, just <laughs> crazy. Absolutely crazy, you know. I didn't, you know, we didn't know. We knew it was going to be a decent, not a decent film, but we knew it was going to be big-ish, but I didn't realise it's probably the most played film I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, there was two. I've, on, I've seen people every time people have texted me the last four or five weeks and say, "Oh, it's on the day, it's on the day." It's like, and it's funny because when we, when when we got the talking parts, I can't remember now. We was probably on about say seven or eight hundred pound a week, and then plus we used to get expense uh, spending money. We found out that the people that uh, had the talking parts that we got the parts from. We're on a lot more money. So me, me, um, Russ Wasman and Johnny Walk, we went in, and I tell you, it was. It was his name was Freddie Fields, and if you look him up, he was the uh, producer of uh, Dallas and them type that type of stuff. So it's quite a hard nosed fellow. We went in there, and uh, he threatened us to be fair, and we said, okay, yeah, we'll go home. But we'd already done. What we'd he say, done fucking do it, or we'll get someone else that can. Yeah, he said. He <laughs> said, uh, what you've got to realise, he said, although you know, uh, you're on this and these on that. You've got to remember, who's the better actor, Stallone or um, uh, Michael Caine? But, and we said, uh, well, Michael Caine. And uh, uh, he said, yeah, he said, but Stallone's getting more money because his box office. He'd just come out of his first Rocky film, you know? So uh, anyway, to be fair, we did end it up, but we, we weren't, weren't just negotiating for the three of us. We negotiated for all the Ipswich boys were out there, so they all got uh, a big, big bump in uh, wages. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it was amazing. It's, it's fantastic. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, you've ever been to Hungary. No, New that Pest. was actually a question I've written down, because uh, where, where, where was it filmed was what I was going to ask you. Yeah. That was in Budapest, we were in a hotel on a Danube, absolutely beautiful, yeah. It's funny, because um, I had some friends that went out there a little while ago, and they went, I said, well, go and visit the hotel where we stayed at, and they didn't. It's, more or less still the same, yeah, so it was, uh, yeah, it was great, you know? Yeah. Really I good. And I did, you know, it's just like, it's always played now, I've seen it everywhere. <laughs> Not that I've watched it. I haven't watched it, I've only watched it once. Oh, really? I haven't seen it, actually. Well, it's like you yeah. said, what, for people who don't know, you said, like, you know, you didn't know what actually was going on, because, and, and, and filming is very, very tedious. After I got into the industry, I actually stopped watching TV. Because it's just yeah. take, stop, do it again, tops, do one That's more, right. just in case, do, and it's just so boring, isn't it? So, oh, boring. so yeah. you done well, mate. Though first take, what was he like? Sliced alone? Did you have? He, yeah, he number one was, jersey. You couldn't have been happy with that. <laughs> he, uh, he weren't, he weren't. He, 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 he played the big time, Charlie. You know, he'd be late and bits and pieces, and oh, really. But yeah, I mean, we didn't really have a lot to do with him. You know, Michael Caine was brilliant. Where everyone, you know, used to said you'll have like a break and something's happened. Uh, Michael Caine would always sit in the, in the canteen with us, you know, and have a chat. And Stallone wouldn't, you know, he'd go back to his trailer. So, but yeah, we didn't. I don't, you know, he was, he was okay. But well, listen, that is just. I'm just fascinated by that. I could drive him out all day to ask you to tell me more, but I've kept you for long enough. And getting off escapes of victory. You know, brilliant, brilliant times at Millwall. So you did it all as a player, as a coach, as a youth team player. And obviously, you know, you, you was part of the team that went on and did things that no one else ever has done. So thanks for joining us, mate. Really, really enjoyed it. Pleasure, mate. Yeah, I've enjoyed it as well, yeah. Top man. Cheers, Callie. Bye, mate.